Welcome to Miles From Home, brought to you by ProDirect and New Balance. I'm Harry Double A, the GB 100 meter sprinter, two-time Olympian and global medalist. And on this episode, we're going to be talking about the comeback. Why the comeback? Talking about injuries, we all get affected by them. It's something that hinders us and it's something that we need more understanding on. Um, we've got some special guests that we're going to be bringing on and also a little product giveaway later. So at the same time, stay tuned and enjoy. And like I said earlier, we've got some special guests. Some people that I'm obviously quite excited to speak to. I know them fairly well, but at the same time, I'm going to let themselves give themselves a little introduction because you may not know about how awesome they are. Um, I'm fully aware, but I figured let's start with Jake. Um, he's a teammate of mine and uh, he's a really cool guy. But Jake, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so my name's Jake Whiteman. I'm a British 1500 meter runner. I was hoping this year to obviously be in Tokyo, but that's been delayed a year. Uh, my biggest achievements in the sport, I won bronze medals at both Commonwealth Games and Europeans in 2018. Um, but yeah, got to wait until next year to hope for the big stuff to come back around. And Becca, how about you? Let's hear about you. What have you been up to? Hi, everyone. I am Becca Bro, and I am a product manager at New Balance for the performance running team. So I get to work with our incredible athletes like Jake uh, and Harry and then our awesome coaches like Steve to make some awesome running shoes. <laughs> We can lead on to Steve just from there. Come on. <laughs> Very smooth. Well, I'm Steve Vernon. I'm the coach and manager of Team New Balance Manchester, which is a group of endurance athletes from across Europe um, that I coach and, and help manage. And we've got a few already qualified for the Olympics. And many moons ago, I was okay at, at running myself through the, the mud, the rain and the hills. So a decent cross-country runner, but uh, nowhere near the, the, the speeds of Jake and, and yourself, Harry. Oh, no. I would have liked to have seen you run 100 metres, to be fair. I could have beaten you in the mud, knee-deep mud. I'd have taken it. 19 <laughs> <Yeah>. seconds. <laughs> you never put too it late. It's never too well. late to have it happen, you know. <laughs> but um, obviously, we're here to talk about the comeback, uh, being focusing around injuries. Um, and funnily enough, we all will have different influences in regards to having athletes being injured, being injured ourselves, or helping athletes on their way back from injury. Um, I want to start with you, Jake, um, yeah. mainly from an athlete's perspective. Uh, we can both relate on different factors, but yeah. you know, what sort of, um, without going too deep, because we've all had a whole long list of injuries, but in yeah. regards to, um, you know, what would you say is one of your biggest sort of setbacks and how would you sort of, how did you overcome it to that extent? Yeah, so I've actually been pretty fortunate, to be fair, that I've only really had one injury that put me out for longer than about 10 days. And that was in the end of 2018, I got a stress fracture in my sacrum. So I was up at altitude in Flagstaff, Arizona, where you're training hard. I probably had a month of almost the best training I've had. Uh, I came back home, I raced a park run, and I had a little bit of tightness in my back and glute. I ran a PB for a park run for a 5K. Uh, and then I couldn't warm down after. I couldn't put any pressure through my leg. And for me, I've never had anything like that. And it was a few days before Christmas, so I couldn't get a scan. So I ended up having to barely be able to sit down for my Christmas dinner because my back oh, was so sore. Yeah, mate. not good. And then oh. I finally got my scan and it revealed a stress fracture in my sacrum. So just above your like glute at the bottom of your back. Uh, and it was going to be three months of no running at all, uh, which... For me, the, the biggest thing was actually being able to find out what it was in the first place. I think the worst bit about injuries is the unknown. It's like, if you don't know how long you're going to be, you're always worrying about whether it could be next week, it could be next year. But I knew that if I waited three months and I did everything I was told, then I would be all right. And it was going to be a pretty, like, a pretty patient three months. I think that's the main thing from it was you can never rush it. Like, I, I just took positives in every little thing I could do. So the first time I was able to go in the pool and aqua jog first time I was able to go on a bike uh, go on a cross trainer and then before I knew it I was back running within three months but I never once felt down about it it was all about I, I'm not down because I can't do this I'm happy because yeah. I can do this and I couldn't do it last week which I think is the main thing from coming back from these setbacks so I was fortunate that I got back running and because I cross trained so hard I was able to come back almost fitter than I had been if I'd been running those three months anyway so my experience was actually a positive one So around that like Obviously, you just wasn't yourself involved. It was, I'd assume, a team around you. And yeah. how, 
how did you find in, in, to simplify it obviously you've got your coach got your physio and whatever else yeah. and the SEC coaches but was it more so the communication in that sense that made it so much easier for that process yeah I, I think the main thing is don't don't lie about how bad something is like if you've got a day and it feels uncomfortable don't try and hide that because they need to know um so I was lucky I went into an intensive rehab unit at Bisham Abbey so every day they'd be like how does it feel like one to ten and almost like every few hours you have to keep updating them so there were days where you're going to have bad days. It's going to feel like it's not healing as well as you hope. But the next day, it might feel as good as it ever has. So you can't expect the recovery to always go smooth. I think it's always communicating that. And it's like, well, maybe we roughed this and we did a little bit too much. Therefore, back off a little bit. So communication is, is the main thing to avoid it from going, going bad and spend even more days injured, which is what you don't want for sure. Literally that. And it's one of those ones where you can't help. But obviously, you know, when you do you know, push the tether too far, you then find yeah. yourself in a situation where you think, if I had only just... So, like, you've obviously yeah. got to pat yourself on the back from that perspective. But then when you sort of find your way out of uh, uh, injury, you tend to look back and think, actually, being injured is harder than actually being in shape, right? Because it's those yeah, yeah. things you need to work on. Like, when you were doing your rehab, did you find that it was just far more time-consuming? Yeah, like, you think you're training hard when you're fully fit and they've got nothing wrong but when you're injured Christ like I, I was doing days it was like 8am until 4pm uh, but something like every single hour and I'd be coming home and I'd be mentally drained and it's like you realise how much you neglect and how much little things you can actually do to improve so I feel like for me getting injured was one of the best things long term to be able to address weaknesses that I wouldn't have seen come in otherwise and it's potentially prevented future injuries because I've been able to work on little things I hadn't uh, had the chance to before so I see it as a blessing in disguise in some ways and we're in a sport where you're going to get injured so you have to try and take as much from it as you can whether that's learning how you mentally deal with injuries whether that's learning like who best to speak to when you do get injured and who you can trust with that there's so many things you can take away from it that aren't all doom and gloom literally that mate I couldn't summarise that any way better <laughs> I think um, it, 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 no, but it's nice for the audience to hear it from a, an athlete's perspective. Also finishing on a positive note, because not everything has to, what you might say, turn around and be such a negative. You, you, you've actually bettered yourself and you've learned a lot. Would you agree in that sense? And it's just about yeah. how you forward. Yeah, because I think like, we're, in, we're in performance sport and in any sport where you're pushing yourself, you're going to be getting injuries because that's the nature of, of doing what we do. Um, so I was almost grateful that that was an injury where I was in control of a little bit. It'd be worse for me if I had like a, say it was like a muscle injury and you're always testing it and it never feels right. Whereas I was in a really good set of hands and I was fortunate that I was in a pretty good space mentally because I knew that it wasn't going to be life changing. It wasn't going to be career ending. I knew that I'd get back from it if I was sensible. Um, but positivity was massive. Like I never once had a day where I was like, I'm fed up with this. Like why me? It's like, it's happened, isn't it? You can't turn back the clock. You've, you're in this place, man. Just get over it. That's, that's the main <laughs> way I felt like I looked at it. Get over it. Get over yeah, it's like, it. It's like stop being pathetic. Uh, There's some days where you're like, you just got to have a word with yourself, don't you? Typical. Yeah, but not, not every, not not every not athlete is like that, Jake. Not every <laughs> athlete is like that. Yeah. You know that, Harry. You know, it, it, it's a really good point that, it, you, you know, the positive outlook because some athletes see it as a massive doom and gloom and head down. And actually, it's very important that you, you start the rehab process and start the recovery process very quickly. And I think yeah. all credit to you, Jake, with that injury that you, you got back on the, on the horse, so to, to, so to say. You know, you got back going and had a positive outlook. And had a time frame and a plan in mind and it worked out really well. So all credit to you. Exactly. Uh, I had a lot of people help me. I think a lot of it as well is you realise sometimes when you're fit and everything's going well and it is tough, you, you kind of resent it a little bit and you're like, oh, this is, this is so hard. Like I'm, I'm knackered here. Like how much do I actually enjoy this? And as soon as it's taken away from you for a period of time, you can't train, you can't do what you want to do. You realise how much you actually appreciate being able to run and being fit. So that, that's another thing. You, you learn kind of what you're doing the sport for. Yeah, it's not too dissimilar to people in lockdown at the moment, having things taken yeah. away. Then all of a sudden, you know, you appreciate your time, you appreciate socialising, you appreciate your family. But, you know, like we just, as Steve just touched on, you know, starting that process tends to be with a decent pair of shoes, did not they? So I've been yeah. being Rebecca Bro here because um, she, well, I don't know how, she's a genius, really. Um, <laughs> I've, I've been fortunate enough and Jake's been fortunate enough, he's been fortunate enough to work with Rebecca Bro on 
different levels um, and it's all to do with making us run faster, perform better and also, you know, avoid injury. So, you know, a quick question to yourself, um, when you're designing footwear, how hard is it and like, is not so much how hard is it because every process is hard, but how integral do you think about avoiding injuries or allowing athletes to uh, have that pathway from? Yeah, Harry, I mean, we're lucky first and foremost because we have athletes like yourself and Jake that make us look really, really good. So my thanks goes out to both of you as well. (laughs) But I, I mean, Jake nailed it, right? Because running is a sport that's full of injuries. And I think regardless where you are, whether you're doing this for your career or whether you're doing this for, for passion and for stress relief, it's always going to happen. And part of it is how you deal with it. Part of it is how you prevent it. And footwear kind of falls on both sides of that spectrum, to be honest. So obviously, when we're working with our creative teams to build shoes, the first and foremost priority is saying, how can we keep our athletes and consumers running for longer? And then the second part of it is, if something happens, how do we make sure that they have enough tools in this toolkit of shoes to make sure that they're able to kind of choose a shoe on any given day that's appropriate for that stage in their recovery? I I love um, this notion of that toolkit of shoes. It's one of the huge things that we advocate at New Balance because I think that you know, as, as Jake spoke, you're, you're going to have so many different things that you're dealing with when you're recovering from injury. And one of the huge things I think is this ability to kind of retrain your body. And I think part of that involves freshness from a proprioceptive point of view and kind of cushioning, right? So for us, we're always advocating that our athletes and that our consumers use a broad range of shoes because it's just going to get your biomechanics firing a little bit differently every day. It's going to help retrain your body. Um, And then more importantly, I think it's just going to keep everything really fresh on your path back to recovery. And then in general too, I think one thing to consider is, is cushioning. Cushioning always helps, right? So we deal with the sport where there is constant pounding and pressure on the body, especially on the distance side. And so for us on the footwear side, it's looking at technologies like fresh foam, and figuring out how do we leverage this incredible cushioning to make sure that everyday runners have a platform under the foot that's going to help just make sure that as they're going out and they're putting in those Ks every day, you know, we're doing the absolute most we can to help protect their body. So would you say that's where like the 1080s come in, in regards to having that general shoe with enough cushioning to be able to enable you to sort of uh, push the boundaries to an extent, but still get a lot of that feedback that you were just talking about? Yeah, absolutely. So the Fresh Foam 1080 is the hero of our Fresh Foam X collection at New Balance. And that shoe was specifically engineered to provide this kind of unicorn level combination of, of Love that. cushioning. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, it's like this magical shoe roaming around out there that once you find it, you never, you never want to let it go. And people don't believe that. A exists. magical moment. <laughs> no, I've got a forest behind me. You know, just, just let's have a shoe right yeah. here. Let's like, put a shoe in right there. <laughs> yeah, if you couldn't believe it exists until you see it, right? Yeah, <laughs> until yeah. you see it and until you feel it, right? So yeah, yeah. it's it's amazing. One of the great things with this fresh foam collection as it's evolved is some of the new materials and compounds we've brought to life underfoot. So Harry, to your point, you know, in the 1080 specifically, we have a compound that not only is significantly softer than the predecessor, so you you put your foot in the shoe and you feel it, and it just it it feels intuitively protective and soft and cushioned. But then it also has surprisingly high energy returns. So you're still getting a great benefit out of it. And then we've also maximized the flexibility in that shoe. So the last thing, again, that we want to do is prohibit the foot from moving the way the foot wants to move. And like Jake spoke to, you know, it's, it's so critical to make sure that you're aware of what your body is doing as you're recovering from injury. So the last thing you want to do is, is put a brick, you know, under your foot or something that's going to limit the natural movement. And so having that little bit of flexibility, but that awesome energy return coupled with this amazing cushioning is really what makes that 1080 so special. You've literally just broken down that unicorn into a perfect sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't eat a unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> if I find a unicorn, I will not eat it. I promise you. <laughs> but it's, it's amazing because how, how in regards to developing a shoe, uh, that obviously you're very proud of and something that, you know, is the forefront of uh, cushioning and energy return. How much feedback from the athletes went into that shoe? 
Yeah, so much. I think the, the best part of my job is getting to work with athletes super regularly. And we make that just such a critical part of our product development process. So we know that we can do all of this testing in the lab, right? We can get these amazing scores back on compounds and materials that tell us theoretically a shoe is going to be able to provide X, Y, and Z to an athlete. But until we've actually validated that with perception from athletes like yourself and Jake, um, then it's, it's kind of a moot point, right? So for us to really be able to go back and leverage our athletes and their feedback to then validate these things that we've tested and vetted out with our sports research lab is absolutely critical. Literally. If anyone doesn't take anything positive away from that and doesn't look at a 1080 shoe like it's an elite runner's shoe, then, you know, they've just, they've missed the unicorn. They haven't gone through the court. <laughs> rewind, <laughs> rewind and watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally that. But obviously, like, if we're talking about race day, what, um, Jake, you're involved in this. What What's your particular race day go to shoe? I want I want uh, Jake to answer that. Yeah. Uh, so I I mix up for road stuff between 1400 and Hanzo. They're my two go to. So 1400 if it was a little bit longer. So I can okay. dabble in a 10k now and then, not so by, by my own choice, but a bit forced into them. Uh, yeah. 5k I might opt for a Hanzo, and if I was in a road mile. 50 to 80 switch. I was lucky enough to have a lot of input into the development of that. So I feel like it's a shoe that has got a little bit of me embodied in it. So I love wearing that. That's good. And Steve, do you have like a common trend within your group or do you sort of, you know, when an athlete comes up to you and says, coach, you know, what am I, what, what's the plan for today? Blah, blah, blah. I'm looking to compete. And then you might say, oh, you might want to switch up them shoes. Or do you ever have input in regards to what you have to running in? Well, I mean, exactly the toolkit. It's uh, sometimes I turn up to the track and I'm going to throw some of my female athletes under the bus. But I see a ruck, <laughs> I see a rucksack on the back. They look like some like a turtle, and I know that they've got every <laughs> shoe possible in there for whatever's going to come. So sometimes I say, make sure you bring. But if I haven't said that, they'll bring everything. But it's great that, like Becca said, in the New Balance range, we've got a a shoe for everything. And and it might be that I'm at the track sometimes where I might be having a combination. So for example, an athlete may do their warm up in the 1080. They may start with some tempo or some longer reps that they, they you know, they may shoot, use a shoe um, like the Hanzo or like the new fuel cell range, the elite racer. And then the final part of the session might be some speed work where they'll transfer into, into the spikes or into a shoe like the Hanzo that, that Jake mentioned there. So it is great to have that toolbox. And also we've got athletes that can have a shoe that they they really love and and can relate to and i think that's really important but you know all my athletes and um, there's 11 now in team new balance manchester and all of them are running in either the 1080 or the, the 880 the, the neutral shoe but the fact that the 880 also offers um, a, a little bit of um control there there's there's people that really like the 880 as well but like becca said before the 1080 the the, the new version People absolutely love them. And, and it was only, uh, you know, two days ago where Johnny Mello was finishing a 20 mile run in the 1080 at sub five minute mile in and just saying the, the, the energy return is just unbelievable. And I, and I think it's, it really is genuinely a brilliant shoe for, from just easy mileage to, to somebody running at sub five minute miles. So on that note, because obviously, like you just mentioned, um, you have 11 athletes uh, as part of Team New Balance. Um, what is, what would you, what have you, you, what do you feel the audience could learn from what might have happened to your athletes? Because you've got quite a nice pool there of different variables there. So what, what, could, what could our audience take away from anything that you might have learned from them? Well, you know, my, my athletes range from the 800 metres right the way up to, to the marathon. So, you know, there's, there's different types of injuries that occur, whereas, you know, the, the higher mileage, there's a lot of sort of overuse injuries that can come in and occur. And then the more speedy athletes, there's more likely to be strains, tears and things like that. You know, I have a mantra that I always want my athletes to be bulletproof. Now, that's, that's not easy to achieve but we do a lot in the gym. We do a lot of strength and conditioning and we work closely with physiotherapists, not just when we're injured, but to prehab and, and look at not getting injured. The physio can be used really well to, to not get injured. And I think when it goes back to um, what Jake said earlier, injuries will happen. And what I often say to my athletes is, we're always running, especially at the elite level, there's always aches and pains every single day when you go out the door. We know that. And it's having that... Um, you know, in, you know, you're in 
thinking, the intuition and knowing what is an injury and what's just general soreness that you're dealing with at that moment in time. And I think a lot of athletes, the consistent, consistent athletes and, and consistency is key. They see the warning signs early. And I always say it's better to have two or three days off than two or three weeks off. And if you can nip an injury in the bud and say, stop, I need to have a rest for a couple of days, see a physio, just check this out. It's more than my usual aches and pains. And, and again, reiterating what Jake said, I use a point scale with them of a one to 10. And I think anything that stays throughout a run or a training session of above a three out of 10 usually is for me to say, actually, no, we need to stop here and get this addressed. So I think a message to go home is, is you know, two days off or two weeks off or even two months off and, and that making that decision because we're all, you know, we go in with this mindset of be tough and oh, it's only a bit of soreness. And, yeah. and, you know, how many times, Harry and Jake, have you regretted just yeah. doing an extra run or an extra rep and then bang, it's, you're out for a long time. This so is, This is the common consensus amongst a mo- uh, the majority majority of athletes because we are so hard working and because we do you know you'll watch a rocky movie and think that you know you can push through anything and yeah. uh, it does go for you know the majority of uh, the audience that might be watching would you say it's fair to say that it's okay to take a rest it's okay to to take your pedal off the gas sometimes is is that something that you would agree with i uh, i constantly repeat myself to my athletes but if you don't recover you don't <laughs> adapt Okay, so you can train as hard as you want, but if you don't in, in, in put the recovery in there to adapt to the training, then all you're doing is training in, a, in an over fatigue state all the time, and that often leads to injury, as we know. So recovery is key to adaptation, and recovery requires rest. It, it's all the things from good nutrition, sleep, and everything around it. But yeah, recovery. If I'd have, you know, I, I wish I'd have learned earlier on in my career about the importance of recovery because. It is so important, and especially for the mileage type people that love the number at the end of the week, it, it's just a number. And consistently over a year, two years, three years, that's what leads to success, not going out for that extra run when really, really sore. So consistency is key, and injuries, um, you know, break up that consistency. They do happen, and, you know, um, they're part of the sport, but minimizing them by um, taking extra recovery, listening to your body, wearing the unicorns, you, you're on to win. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a picture of someone on a unicorn wearing bulletproof armor now. You know, you know you've know, yeah. got bulletproof wearing these unicorns. But let's, um, to summarize, basically, we're going to think of some top tips, not just normal top tips, ultimate top tips. So you guys have a quick think. Um, we'll be nice and quick with it. Um, I'll kick it off, and I'm going to say... Um, Jake touched on this earlier and I'm all about it. It's within my DNA, positivity. You know, if, if you're coming back from an injury, if you are on your way to do anything, really, if, if your goal is set, make it a positive journey. Take, take lessons from everything. It's going to be up and down. It's going to be hard. It's going to be easy. Whether you get there quicker than you thought or slower than you thought, enjoy the process, but ultimately always have that PMA, that positive mental attitude in regards to everything that you do. Because ultimately, you know, life's short, enjoy it as you're doing it, and then you'll enjoy the process and learn from it. So um, I, I definitely would say that. So what would, again, let's bring it back to Steve, because I feel like you were flowing then, you were flowing. So give us another yeah. one. You were, give us another <laughs> I'm one. Gonna, I've got loads, I've got loads. I'm going to come <laughs> into the first one though. Well. But, uh, patience. When you are injured, have patience. Um And I think patience, well, just in general, having patience in being an athlete and and leading to that, I think that leads on to what I just said is consistency is key. Patience is key throughout the whole game uh, in in running, not just endurance running, in sprinting. And it's, um, I think that's a key word to to follow on from positivity. So we'll go with two P's for now. P.P., Becca, what you got for me? I have two. Are you ready? I'm ready. (laughs) (laughs) I'm up my neck. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, the the first I think we've touched on, but I always just sum it up as reframing injury as opportunity. I I had major hip surgery like 10 years ago, and I had eight months where I couldn't run a step. And when I got to run again, I felt like it was such a privilege. And so for me, it was an opportunity to kind of retrain my body, to address weaknesses, and really just to kind of enjoy and savor the sport and start from square run again, which was so refreshing for me. 
The second though, which is totally shoe related is take that time to build your toolkit of shoes. I think just the same way that different foods you eat provide nutrients for your body, a different shoe will provide purpose and a different proprioceptive feel for your everyday runs. So as you build out that toolkit, keep in mind, you know, we build fresh from shoes specifically to help you run further. And then we build fuel cell shoes specifically to help you run faster and having a healthy mix of both of those collections is only going to do you so much good as you start running more and more after injury. I love it. You know what I mean? Just, yes. just, just offering so much there. Oh, so much knowledge. Yeah. I enjoy that. Uh, Jake, <laughs> summarize it. Come on. You've got one in there. So, I know <laughs> yeah, I've got one ready. So mine's taking inspiration from Steve would be honesty. So be honest about if you're in discomfort or pain, as Steve said, and, and confide in someone like a coach like Steve or a physio. And don't be in denial if something's still not right. The, the more open and clear about injuries you are, the more likely it's going to be that someone can help you to make it better. So don't be afraid of being in pain and taking those days off because at the end of the day, like Steve said, it's better to have three days off than three weeks. Literally that. And obviously that's only four. So I'll, I'll, give, a, I'll give an extra one. Might as well. I mean, Becca did come in with two, but um, just a little one <laughs> on top of that. I would say documentation of the combat. Yeah. Yeah. Whether it be some form of review, whether it be some form of feedback, whether it be talking to someone, but a training diary, just as, as simple as that jotting down how you feel, what progression you've made. And it's also a good reflection perspective because as we were saying, what Becca was just saying, you know, a training diary might come in hand if you just get a new pair of shoes, put them in there. You know, this made me feel like X, Y, and Z. And this is why I want to move forward and use this. And you can look back a year later and say where I was, what helped me, what happened at this point, if it happens again. So documentation is definitely what I would summarize it with. But, um, I'm also going to touch on something. Uh, I feel like it's fair to say that there's a giveaway. Um, and we have uh, some 1080s that we're going to be giving away. Uh, some details to follow underneath in the comments. You'll be able to see them. Uh, T's and C's may apply. <laughs> um, I want to thank everyone for their time. Uh, it's been great to sit down and talk with you guys because obviously I'm, I'm lucky enough to know you lot. And at the same time, I appreciate you guys. And I think our audience will appreciate you now even more. Um, and uh, yeah, do like and subscribe um, and comment below where we're all here for it. So thank you guys. If there's thank anything you. else we haven't Thanks, touched man. on, feel free to say, but I really appreciate you chatting to you lot. Great. Thank you very much, Harry. Thank you, mate. Thanks, awesome. Harry. Thanks, mate. Peace out. Thanks, guys. So after that lovely insight from my little panel, um, amazing little gems in there, may I, may I add, um, we're going to touch on something that I think you all are excited to hear about. Um, you know, there's an opportunity to win a pair of 1080s, but first, I think we need to hear some more about them, and that's where Becky's going to come in and uh, give us some more insight. Yes, let's talk more about this mythical little shoe, shall we? <laughs> so the Fresh Home 1080 we love for so many different reasons, but if I had to share just a couple of the key tech bullet points and call outs, we have built this shoe from the bottom up. So we're providing 18% more flexibility than the predecessor. It's 8% more softer. It's 7% lighter. It has 11% more energy return than the predecessor. So for anyone familiar with this series, this is next level Fresh Foam from an underfoot perspective. When we talk about the upper of the Fresh Foam 1080, we have a really amazing zonal stretch knit. So it's gonna fit just like a beautiful glove over the foot. And then we've embroidered through the midfoot just for that little extra security and have added an ultra heel component in the back of the foot to really cradle around the calcaneus and just provide an amazing fit. So top to bottom, 360 degrees of cushioning, softness, and data-driven engineering in the Fresh Foam 1080. Wow. All I can say is wow. That's some like real insight from some integral technology right there. It's gonna make you run better and run faster. And for a chance to win them, comments below, T's and C's apply. Down there, get in there, see how you can win. And just like that, we have it. I have to say that was an amazing episode, really insightful for myself. Do like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you keep yourself up to date. Like I said, I've really enjoyed it. I hope you have too. Peace out.